Hi and welcome to this video where today we will be taking a look at the 3D Connection Space Mouse. This model right here is technically called the Space Navigator but it's essentially the same thing as the Space Mouse itself. The only difference I found is that this one has this curved shape whereas the newer Space Mouse has a sharper edge on the side. So as usual we start with the physical build of the tools. So here as you can see the base is made out of metal and it's stainless steel i believe that makes it very heavy we can quickly see how much it weights so it's 451 grams or in ounces it's 15.85 ounces so quite heavy given how small this is and that has a reason the reason being that while well, you use this mouse by gripping this little knob on the top and then you have six axes of movement so you can either go up down left right front back or you can also turn it on other axes so you can do it like this and front to back and finally you can also turn it as clockwise or counterclockwise so you really have freedom with this mouse you can really turn the object you want to manipulate just like you want however i still don't like this mouse and i will explain that later in the video for now let's quickly finish looking at the physical build and let's see this in action in some 3d modeling software i have installed so on the sides there are two buttons that you can program with the software and also there is a blue led ring that surrounds the knob uh, you can't see it yet as it's not plugged in before actually speaking about the software i'll quickly demonstrate the top knob now it feels kind of weird it feels like there will be a magnet or a spring holding it in center because as you can see there is like a spring motion whenever you release the top cap so yeah there is a bit of the resistance when using it also the top knob has rubber sides so it's really easy to grip it but now let's see this thing in action in the software so there is a app called uh, 3d connection that you need to install to have access to all the features you could need. Now we go to advanced settings and we can activate or deactivate the LED. So here it turned on and it's your choice. Personally, I think it's kind of disturbing to have this shine uh, during night as you can really see the hotspots with the LEDs. So it kind of feels uh, a bit gimmicky. Maybe a white ring of LEDs would have looked nicer, but personal preference, I like to turn it off. Then we can really set all the actions that the space mouse can do. So here are all the directions you can use it to control. You can also reverse some controls. Now, as you can see, this is only acting on the desktop, meaning that if now let's say we go to AutoCAD, on the corner we can now see that the settings are now only affecting the AutoCAD application. So if we draw a circle, for example, we can use the space mouse to move around. But well, in AutoCAD, I haven't uh, managed to make it work in 3D. It's still only like a cursor, but in like two axes. So let's try it up down. Can't really move in 3D space. However, now let's open, for example, Fusion 360. So I have loaded up this phone stand model I made. And let's quickly add uh, some texture to it. So it looks a bit nicer. And also let's go to the render view. So in Fusion, as you know, in the rendering section, you really need to set up the view that you want to use for the rendering. With the space mouse, you really can control the object like you, you would feel it in real life. Oh yeah, first always make sure that the text is pointing towards you, otherwise it doesn't really make sense to use this thing. But yeah, now I can really control everything very precisely i can just grab the knob and do the motion in real life and on the screen it follows what i asked the model to do and now that we have a model loaded i'll quickly show you all the functions again so you can push it back bring it to front uh, move it left right up and down and also you can turn it in all the axes that you would want and in the settings we have a lot of options to make the mouse feel just like we want. So here you have the speed controller that's controlling the global speed of the mouse. So for example here it's now very very sensitive and kind of unusual. And on the other side now it's really really slow. You have a lot of control but it will take very long to make any work whatsoever. So let's put it back in the middle. Kind of snaps in place as you can see that's nice. 
uh, but yeah in the advanced settings you can actually activate or deactivate all of the axes and set their sensitivity so for example i found that the front back motion was a bit too sensitive so i can dial it down a bit and now it takes a bit more effort to make it move in the front and back dimensions uh, while the other dimensions are still the same so yeah that's nice with this mouse is that you can really customize it to your needs it takes some time to set up but once you have it done it really matches what you want this mouse to do so yeah as you can see it really makes using the 3d space really really easy and what's nice with this mouse is that if you use a lot of 3d modeling software where sometimes the controls are a bit different while well, with this mouse you can have the same muscle memory for all the software and that's quite a nice feature to have now we already saw fusion series 60 let's now open this thing up in rhino so here i have uh, a little 3d model i need for my tripod and now again as you can see you can really move around in all of the three axes sometimes when you lose it it's a bit annoying you can't see the object anymore and again we can really move in 3d in all of the dimensions at once whereas for example with the mouse and keyboard configuration well now we're a bit too far but yeah you really need to switch between the right click and the shift key to move around the object so it really isn't as smooth as that here really all of the axes at once no keyboard or mouse needed as we are opening all of the software at once let's see if my pc can handle opening also revit at the same time and again as you can see you can move around and while rotating this you can really set the view that you want to see now this is like the presentation of the object as someone who works for 3d connection would do it uh, only speaking about the positives but because this is youtube and i'm not sponsored in any way uh, let's now quickly talk about the negatives of using this mouse while well, first thing is that as you can see there are now three peripherals on my desk so keyboard mouse and this thing but i only have two hands so there is a little problem in the setup now the keyboard and mouse you can really do a lot with them basically all the 3d modeling is done with these two this thing is only useful for the visualization of the object so you really don't have a choice but to use both the mouse and the 3d mouse with one of your hands and that's the main caveat of this thing is that well it's only useful for 3d viewing you can't always have your hand on it you need to switch between one of these two peripherals and the 3D mouse. So yeah, if let's say you have a design that you want to see in 3D space, it's useful. But to work on the design itself, it's really slowing you down compared to actually learning how to navigate in 3D in the software that you are using, for example, Fusion. Yes, it is a bit choppy. It's not as smooth as using this knob here, but at least I can quickly switch between the different tools in the 3D modeling software. I can extrude, I can draw some, some shape, I can rotate the thing, I can do another extruding. Here you always need to set up the view, then you can go ahead and do a sketch with your mouse as usual. Take it, extrude for the demo here. Now if you want to move again, you need to go back to the 3D mouse. So yeah, it's really a constant switching between the two mouses also the little buttons on the side you have two of them so let's click the first one in fusion uh, as you can see you have some options there but you can't choose anything because well moving the middle knob moves the 3d view and not the cursor itself so it's kind of stupid you have the menu appearing and you need to jump back to the other mouse to select anything while you could simply do a right click and have a much better menu and the other button while you can choose for the view here so front view oh nice well with the mouse it's not really that hard to just go to the to the upper cube there and choose what you want these two buttons you can actually also customize in the settings app so if you go to buttons we can actually type a shortcut so for example m for move and now if we select that button we have the move that's appearing but when you go to configure it you actually can do some useful things for example we can select it to open the appearance now if i press it it goes ahead and loads up the appearance menu on the right so i can quickly change 
the material of the body you have all of the commands you would want for example i don't know manage materials i think there is no shortcut for that in fusion by default but now if we click on the right we have the manage materials panel that's opened up so yeah to actually make any use out of these buttons you need to take some time to configure them properly now i have opened up lumion and let's for example go see this house here and see if the space mouse works with this and as you can see all we can do is zoom in and out and that's a bit sad because lumion is one of the softwares that has different keys for moving around than all of the other 3d software so having the mouse work in lumion would be nice but well it's not working you can only zoom in and out there is no better support now because this is a software maybe this will improve in time but for now this is all we get i'll quickly show you also the 3d connection home app that you get when you install the drivers for this thing from the internet so there is a trainer app actually in here that you can use the model up to and down by learn the how to move up the model down. in 3D space. In the there is also some other weird stuff that well, you can feel like an engineer at BMW or, or whatever. And finally, also there is this calibrate button uh, that you can use to calibrate your 3D mouse really easily. You just press it and then uh, leave it do its thing and now it's calibrated. So yeah, that was it for the uh, presentation of the mouse. Now the final verdict, do I recommend you buy one or not? While it's kind of a hard question to answer, it really depends on your workflow and how you like to use the 3D modeling softwares. Personally, since the day I bought it, I have really rarely used it because I already knew how to use the mouse and the keyboard. This is kind of a second best option for me. I'm so much more quicker with the keyboard because you don't have to switch your hand between the two mouses. Now, who would I recommend this mouse to? Well, if you are not actually interested in 3D modeling by itself, but more visualizing pre-made 3D models, this thing is nice because you can really set up the view that you like and maybe make a rendering or do some animation or draw. In that case, it could be nice to use. But yeah, as I said, the classical mouse and keyboard combination is so much more quicker for me. But again, this is my uh, review video. This is what I think about this mouse. Maybe if you try it out, you will see that you love this thing, and that it will make you a so much better creator, and it will be 100% worth it. If you can find a place to test it out, I would highly suggest you to do so, because it's hard to convey what this thing feels like in video and trying it out for yourself is the best review you can get. So yeah, this was my review of the 3D Connection Space Mouse. I hope you liked it. If that's the case, please leave a like and subscribe down below to not miss any future uploads. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.